Welcome back. I've gone ahead and launched that Social Studies 7 class team that I just created. I encourage you to launch a class team that either you've created or that was created for you in order to follow along with me. Now, Microsoft Teams are organized by what are called channels that appear in a list along the left hand side. And inside channels, we have different tabs. Notice that one channel is automatically created for us. It is called the general channel. Here inside the general channel, you will find the following tabs. A tab for the conversation space where students and teachers can communicate and collaborate with each other. A files tab, we'll give that a minute to load, where again, teachers and students can share files. There's even a folder that has been locked that is specific for the teacher's class materials. This lock means that any files that are loaded inside class materials cannot be edited by the students. There's a tab to launch the OneNote class notebook for this specific class, as well as the assignments tab where we can create, view, and even grade or assess student work. We also see a plus sign here that we'll talk about in a future video, but this allows us to add a tab to apps as well as files or even websites or YouTube videos at the top of the channel for easy access. Let's go back to the conversations tab. Now, as I mentioned, teams are organized by channels. One channel has been automatically created for us. That is the general channel. However, we can make more specific channels that are specifically focused on different units, topics, or even chapters that we are studying in our subject area. To make a new channel, simply come up to the title of the team and click on the three dots, the more options menu and select Add Channel. Here we're prompted to give this a specific name. So I'm going to organize my team by chapters, and I'm going to give my channel a specific name related to the first chapter. Again, I could give a brief description of the channel, and I can decide whether I want to have the channel automatically appear in everyone's channel list. If I'm planning ahead, I might choose to keep the channel hidden and then activate the channel when I'm ready. But because this is the first channel that I want all students to have access to, I'm going to turn on automatically show this channel in everyone's channel list. And I click add. Notice that underneath the general channel, I now see that first channel, chapter one, First Nations people. If I wanted to go ahead and add another channel, again, I'd click those three dots for the more options and click add channel. This time, I won't turn on automatically show this channel in everyone's list, and I'll go ahead and click add. This channel will not appear in the students list. I will see it in my teacher list, but the students won't see it in theirs. However, if I hover over the name of the channel and click on the three dots, I can hide that channel. And when I'm ready for the channel to be visible to all students, I again hover over the title of the channel, click on the three dots, and click show. All right, I just want you to notice inside the channels you create, Again, those channels are organized by tabs. You have a conversations tab, which is meant as the conversation space related specifically to the area of focus within that channel. A files tab, where you can share files that are again specific to the area of focus in that particular channel. And you have a notes tab, which is connected to the class notebook or the OneNote class notebook. 
Now that I've started organizing my team, I can think about adding members or inviting individuals into my team. So again, if I come up to the name Social Studies 7 and click on the three dots for more options, I can simply click Add Member. Again, keep in mind that if this team has been auto-created for you by the district, it will also be auto-populated. Just check the list of students. Let's close this by going to the three dots, more options, and manage team. Here you can see all of the members and guests, as well as the owners of the team. Make sure you check that list to make sure that all of your students are there. Notice that you can also add a member from this screen by clicking the purple add member button. And again, you would go ahead and just start typing in students' names. If you wanted to add more teachers, you could also click on the Teachers tab and start typing in the name of the individual you would like to be part of your team. Once you're ready, simply click Add. And notice that they're automatically added as a member. If you were adding another teacher, you might want the teacher to be an owner. You would just simply click on this drop down caret next to Member and change their membership to Owner. But in this case, I want this student to be a member, so I'll leave their settings as member and click close. Another way to invite individuals into your team as members or guests is to give them the team join code. To access the team join code, click on the three dots next to the name of the team for more options. Click Manage Team, and then here in the Manage Team, click Settings, and about three quarters of the way down, click Team Code. Click the purple Generate button to generate a team code, and notice that you can display this code by clicking Full Screen. You can reset the code at any time or remove the code at any time to prevent others from joining and you can copy the code in order to paste it into an email or into a team chat. For those students who have the join code, they would simply come to Teams and click Join or Create Team and enter the join code and click Join Team.